Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel and to our lucky 13th video in the introductory R series. In the last video, we discussed some of the different formats of data files and how to read them in, including special cases. In this video, we'll talk a little bit more about files. We're going to discuss file paths, working directories, and how and why you should create projects in R. Let's dive in. In this video, I will be using the words folder and directory interchangeably. We'll begin with the idea of a working directory. The working directory in R is the directory R will search for files you're loading in your code, and it's the directory R will write files to if you write a file using R code. In most of our scripts so far, we've imported files using read CSV, followed by the file name. This works if the file we're reading is in the working directory. If we use read CSV and the file name, and the directory with the file is not the working directory, we'll get an error. Let's look at an example of this. On my desktop, I have a folder called dir example. In this folder, I have an R script called directories underscore example dot R, and I have our AI dataset CSV that we've used in many videos called Private Investment in Artificial Intelligence by Focus Area CSV. Here's the R script in R Studio. And after loading the tidyverse, we're reading in our artificial intelligence data as we've done many times. Before we do that, in the console, let's look at what the working directory is with getwd. We can see that getwd returns a path beginning with my D drive, and it is not the desktop path. By the way, in Windows, you can see a folder's path by clicking on the folder in the path bar. That can be useful to know, although not so much for our programming, because you never want to use a full path like that when you're programming. A full path, or absolute path, ties your code to your machine and the specific directory structure you have at the time you're writing the program. Okay, so our working directory is not the dir example directory. Let's see what happens when I run this script. I get an error. Private investment in artificial intelligence by focus area .csv does not exist in current working directory. And then it lists out the name of the current working directory. Now we can set the working directory with setwd. We can use that path I showed you at the top of the folder for that. So for example, I can open the folder, click on the folder in the address bar, and then copy that. And then in our studio, I can type at the console setwd. And then in parentheses, I'll paste my path name, add quotes around it because it's a string. And I'll have to do one other thing that might seem a little crazy. Add a backslash in front of each backslash. This is because the backslash indicates a special character in a string called an escape character. So we have to escape the escape character. If you're a programmer, you're probably familiar with this idea. And if you're not, don't worry about it or ask me a question in the comments if you like. Press enter. And now when I run my script, R found the AI data file because it's in the working directory. That was a lot of work. There are easier ways to change the working directory in R Studio. We can click on the script we want to execute. And then in the session menu, we can choose set working directory and then choose to source file location. You can see down in the console that also set my working directory to the dir example directory. Now, I said before, you don't want to use these very specific paths because it ties the script to your machine's configuration at this time. If I used this path in my script, see users Maggie desktop dir example, and then I moved dir example into my design code debug repeat folder, that path would no longer be valid and my script would break. If I gave it to you, it wouldn't work on your machine. The better way to create shareable R scripts is to create a project which will hold your script and related files. Let's turn the dir example folder into a project. In the file menu, I'm going to choose new project, and then I'll choose existing directory. 
and it has defaulted to my working directory. If it didn't, I would click the Browse button and choose the directory I wanted to use. Now I'm going to click Create Project. Now, look over in the Files tab. I'm seeing the structure of the Dir example folder, and there's a new file, durexample.rproj. And back at the desktop, we can see the same thing. Now that's just a text file of settings for the project. Now, if I want to share this project, I can share the entire project folder with you or anybody else. And if I've written my script correctly, the project will work. We'll talk about writing the script correctly in a moment. First, let me just demonstrate how the project works. I'm going to open another file, one not in the project, in R, and I'm going to use the session menu to set the working directory to the location of this new file. Okay, now look what happens if I then open the project we just created using file open project and then navigating to and choosing the durexample.rproj file. If I type getwd, it's been set back to the project working directory. So one benefit of a project is when you open it, the project directory is the working directory, no matter where it is. I'm going to close our studio and move the project into another folder, which I will call folder. And now this time, just to illustrate another way to open a project, I'll double click on the durexample.rproj file. And now when I type getwd in the console, I can see that the working directory is the new location of the project folder. So wherever you put it, that will be the working directory, including if you put it on a different machine. Okay, now let's talk about how to write the script properly so that your project paths will always work. If you have a file right out at the top level of your project directory, like private investment in artificial intelligence by focus area .csv, then just use the name of that file to import it into a table. But suppose you have a subdirectory with files, like our subdirectory called data, then you will use the relative path to the files you want to open. A relative path is a path from the current file to the file you're interested in. The path is relative to the current file. So in a relative path, you don't talk about where the current file is. That's your starting point. From directories example.r, the path to AI data 2017.csv, for example, is through the folder data. And let's compare those paths. I'm going to get them from the desktop by clicking on the folder and I'll just paste them into the script for comparison. Okay, so the path to our R script is C users Maggie desktop folder dir example, and the path to the data folder is C users Maggie desktop folder dir example data. In a relative path, you ignore all of the parts that are the same, and you're only concerned with where the two paths diverge. That's with the folder data. So that's where the relative path begins, at data. What if we're going backwards? We can use two dots to move backward a directory or up to the parent directory. So if we had a script in the data folder, we would use the path dot dot to move back to the dir example folder. And to add a file to that, it would be dot dot slash file name. In order to write code that will work on any computer for any operating system, it's better to let R construct the paths for us from the path components. So we can open our AI data 2017 CSV file from the current script by writing AI underscore 2017 is assigned the value of read CSV data slash AI data 2017.csv. The correct relative path. I'll view it and demonstrate. Okay, 
That works on my computer, but will it work on yours? Probably, but not necessarily. To create a path that is truly general, we should use the file.path function. Here's another version of creating that path. Path is assigned the value file.path, data, comma, AI data 2017.csv. So we just pass in the components separated by commas in order, and then AI 2017 is assigned the value of read CSV, and I'll pass in the variable path as the parameter, and then we can view AI 2017. It's safest to use file.path to create a file path, so the correct directory separator is used. If you want to move up a directory, pass in dot dot. So let's just create a fake path here with file.path. I'll call it path of two. And I'll write file.path dot dot comma dot dot comma file.csv. And if we look at path up two, we can see that's a correct path to move up two parent directories to the file file.csv. Okay. I know that relative paths can be a little bit confusing, but I hope this video helps. If you create projects and use relative paths in your scripts, you'll be able to move your projects anywhere on your hard drive and share them with colleagues and their work. So this is an important topic to master. I've included an auto graded exercise that you can download from my GitHub repository, along with all of the code from this video. The links are in the description of this video, along with some book recommendations. Have fun with it.